Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and Happy New Year. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and that 2019 is going to be a happy and prosperous year for you. Um, 2019 certainly looks like it's going to be a happy and fun and exciting year for me, um, but I'll get into the reasons for that at a later date. Um, today I want to talk about what I enjoyed over the Christmas period. And this is a little bit late because that Christmas period got extended into almost the middle of January, so I've had to kind of wait in order to do this. Um, but if you've been following my blog, you'll have seen me doing Christmas favourites posts anyway that I updated as I went along. Those posts have got very long and very detailed, so I'll link to those in the description. This video is just going to be a summary that um, tells you a bit about everything I've got up to. But if you want all the detail, then go and check out my various blog posts and for the photos and all the details. So yeah, I'm going to crack straight on with it and I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing I want to mention is actually the last thing we did, and this took place shortly after the 12 days of Christmas had traditionally finished. So my mother and I managed to use this to extend our Christmas season just a little bit further and finish it off in style. And that was A Christmas Carol at the Old Vic. And we'd actually tried to go and see this last year, but fell ill and couldn't go. So we were determined to try and go this year and just had our fingers very tightly crossed that we didn't get any colds this year. Which, touch wood, we haven't so far this year. We've been very well this winter, thankfully, so far. So yeah, we went along to the Old Vic and we had a touch tour and audio description, as per usual, as we like to do for all the shows we go to. And we had an amazing time. It is an absolutely stunning play. Stephen Tompkinson is fantastic as Scrooge. He really nails it. Tiny Tim is really adorable as well. We actually got to meet the little boy who plays him. Leo Lake, he was called. He's actually one of four disabled actors who actually share the role. So they've actually got disabled children playing the role of this disabled character which is fantastic you know it doesn't sound like a big thing perhaps but it actually is because disabled actors often get overlooked for disabled roles they often go to able-bodied people so the fact that children are being given this massive opportunity to perform in such a big production in such an iconic venue is absolutely brilliant and indeed the old vic are really working hard on their accessibility this year as well the audio description we had was actually done in-house they've had training from vocalized to help them set it up but it is actually theirs that they do um, just like when I went to see a Monster Calls last year. And also they're doing renovations this year as well to try and improve their accessibility in the building. So they're going to be improving their wheelchair access and they're going to be installing more loos for the ladies as well because that's been a big problem. So that's brilliant. I know they're doing a lot of work. They've had to get a lot of funding for that. I think they're knocking a wall down in the theatre to get all this sorted out or something like that. So it's brilliant that they're making such an effort on their accessibility and it'll be interesting to keep an eye on that. But anyway, back to the show, and yeah, everyone in it was brilliant. The whole cast was really, really great. Uh, the music is beautiful as well. It's all played live, including by some of the cast members on the stage. There's some lovely handbell ringing. It's really harmonious and beautiful. It's really nice. And the lighting is great. There's Victorian lanterns on the ceiling that make patterns of their own and things. But the main thing to mention about the production is not that it's just a play. It's actually very immersive. You don't actually take part as such, but it is actually very much an experience rather than a play because you feel part of it. You know, from the moment you enter, the cast members are there handing out delicious mince pies and oranges from Waitrose, who have been sponsoring the show. So that gets you in the festive mood. And then throughout the show, the whole auditorium is used in some way or another. So you do get cast members coming down into the audience or there's a long walkway that goes all the way through the stalls because the stage is a very unique kind of cross design so the audience are all round the stage at the top of the cross and also either this side of this walkway going down through the stalls so there's characters around you all the time at some point and if you're looking from the upper circles you've got a good top-down view of the whole thing but yeah there are definitely times when parts of the auditorium are used especially towards the end there's a big set piece towards the end where the entire auditorium takes part in some way it's really really ingenious very clever the way they kind of bring all the props in in that particular moment and there's fake snow that falls as well and it's just yeah it's really really good fun the whole thing it's a proper festive immersive experience not just a play that you're passively watching you do feel that you're being acknowledged and you're part of it even though you're not really doing anything so it's really really good it's really really enjoyable it's written or adapted by uh, Jack Thorne who also wrote Harry Potter and the Cursed Child so that's the kind of pedigree we're working with here so yeah it's really really good I highly recommend it if you get the chance to go and see it and then the other theatre show I went to see back in December um, was Dick Whittington, the pantomime with the Lyric Hammersmith Theatre. I went to see that with my friend Claire and we had a touch tour for that to start with where we got to see lots of the props and some of the sets as well. It was all very colourful and bright, which was nice and easy to see a lot of it. And we got to meet the guy who plays Dick Whittington as well. So that was really good to chat to him and other people who work on the show. And then, yeah, the pantomime itself was great fun. Lots of laughs with jokes for the adults as well as the kids and plenty of interaction. And it was just 
really fun and lively and enjoyable. So I would definitely consider going back there again for another pantomime. It was very, very good. And then I also saw a film at the cinema over the uh, Christmas period, and that was It's a Wonderful Life. And this is the original film. It's an old film, which I've never seen before. It's a classic in many people's eyes, I know, but I've never seen It's a Wonderful Life before. So I went to see that at the Prince Charles Cinema, who show a lot of old films in Leicester Square, you know, show a lot of old classics, and they do sing-alongs and all sorts in there. So I went to see that, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it, you know, being an old black and white film, if I'd enjoy it or not. But I did, I really enjoyed it. It's a very sweet story, and there's lots of humour in there. I think more than I expected, I think. I actually laughed more than I thought I might do. So, yeah, it's a very, very good film. I really enjoyed seeing that for the first time ever. And then I also went to a carol concert as well, because it's nice to go and hear some traditional music every year at Christmas. And this time I went to the St Saviour's Church in Pimlico to hear carols from around the world performed by a choir there. And that was really, really lovely. It was really good. Some of the carols I knew, some I didn't. And even those I knew were in different arrangements that I'd never heard before. So that put an interesting new spin on them. And it just sounded really, really nice. The choir were wonderful. And even um, the guy leading the choir, the conductor, he broke into song as well at the end as a surprise encore, which was really, really fun. He was very, very good, actually. He shocked us all with how brilliant his voice was, given that he'd just been talking to us all the time before then, in between all the different carols. So, yeah, it was a really nice evening. That was a, another nice Christmas tradition ticked off the list. And then I also went to see an exhibition as well. I went to see A Time Traveller's Christmas at Fenton House, which is a National Trust property. And that was really, really good because they had different rooms decorated for different Christmas periods in history. So there was a Georgian room and a Victorian room and a 1920s room and a 1970s room. And it was all really, really interesting. And the 1970s room was the one I could relate to most because it had games like Twister and Monopoly and lots of the food and the music and things I recognised. So that was quite fun. But it was interesting to see all the more historical rooms as well. And they've got lots of um, old instruments in that building as well, which is uh, really fun. There's old harpsichords and harps and lutes and things like that. So it's a really lovely building. I'd never heard of it before, but it was well worth a visit. And then I also saw a Christmas lights display as well. That's again something I like to do every year. Um, you know, I like to go wandering the streets like Carnival be in Oxford Street and all that kind of thing and see the lights they have but this was a more specific thing I went to Christmas at London Zoo where they had a special light display there with light tunnels and lit up animal sculptures and all sorts of bits and pieces obviously you had to be a little bit quiet in some areas because obviously the animals are asleep a few of them were awake but you know you couldn't really see them in the dark um, but the light displays were absolutely beautiful all sorts of different varieties and there was some music as well as you went round and there was one two areas where you could get food and go on fairground rides and things um, in terms of navigating being visually impaired, that was hard at times because I think some of the paths were darker than I expected them to be. Some of it, it was virtually pitch black almost, or it certainly seemed that way to me. So I had to be a bit careful and then just sort of follow other members of the public, really, kind of use them if I couldn't quite see the pathway, um, which worked fine. You know, I didn't have any accidents or anything, but yeah, it was perhaps more dimly lit than I expected. I appreciate that's not to wake the animals up, but I suspect they could have really perhaps put in a few more sort of dimmer lights along the side of the path or something just to help people along a bit. A little bit more light in there would be helpful. And yeah, it was just really, really lovely. Another nice way to spend an evening. And then the other thing I did while out and about this year was having lots of Christmas meals, of course. I managed to get to quite a few this year, which was really, really great. I got to hang out with various different groups that I meet regularly and socialised with my friends there to celebrate the festivities, which was lovely. Um, for example, I went to an RNIB Connect group, which was great. I got to meet a fellow blogger there for the first time, actually, uh, Ellen from See My Way, whose blog I highly recommend you check out. She hasn't updated it for a while, but it's worth reading to look at her volunteering experience in Belgium and stuff like that. She's a really, really good writer, so do go and check her out at See My Way. And I also had Christmas dinners with East London Vision and South East London Vision, of course, and the London Sports Club for the Blind. And I got to go down to Torquay as well and have dinner with my workmates down there, which was really, really good. So, yeah, I, I fed myself well over the Christmas period. And at home, we ate well, too, of course. We had food ordered in from Marks and Spencer's, so you order that in advance and then go and pick it up from the store. So we had like a four bird roast and we had a big turkey crown and we had a nice big joint of gammon as well that we had in sandwiches. And we had cakes, of course, too. Christmas puddings and things and various other treats and places like Waitrose too and a few treats in Fortnum and Mason as well. We don't shop in these places regularly during the year so it's nice to just treat ourselves at Christmas to little things like that. So yes we overindulged but it was worth it. We'd earned the treat. So yeah again all that's in my blog. I've listed kind of all the stuff we bought if you're really interested to go and see the meals I went to and all the food I had. 
So yeah, that concludes everything I've done while I'm out and about. I'm going to move on to some other stuff in a second. But yeah, again, just to repeat that everything is in my blog in more detail. So there's a dedicated post for a Christmas carol for a start because that deserved a review all of its own. And then there's also a post about everything else I did while out and about and also a dedicated post about all the food and drink I enjoyed as well. So there's plenty of detail on all those different things in all those different blog posts. So go and check that out if you want the detail because if I was to go into detail here in this video, we'd be here for hours and hours. And now for the second bit of this video, I want to go on to the entertainment I've been enjoying as well. So the first thing to mention in terms of home entertainment is actually the fact that we got a new TV shortly before Christmas because we've had the old TV that we inherited from my nan when we moved in, which has been in the house about 10 odd years, I think. And although it picks up Freeview, it doesn't have any high definition capability. It's not a smart TV or anything like that. So we wanted to upgrade and we thought we would this year to treat ourselves. So we got a new TV and a soundbar and a Blu-ray player. So the TV is a Samsung 32 inch LED smart TV. It's very, very nice. It has a lovely clear picture on it. And it's nice to be able to watch stuff in HD now. You know, uh, the Virgin TiVo box that we've got gives you channels in both HD and standard definition. So I've now been able to compare the two and there's a definite difference that I can see. So it's great to have a much sharper picture now. The big thing about the Samsung TV though is that it has voice guide built in. So it will actually talk the menus to you. It will talk you through like the program guide. It will announce when you've changed the channel, you know, what program is currently on as well as what channel you're on. It will tell you how long the program is and all this kind of stuff. 19 yesterday, the two Ronnies 23 to zero. Audio description. 20 drama silent witness 23 to 130 audio description it's not the nicest voice in the world necessarily it's not as nice as the amazon echo voice or siri but it still does the job you know it's still perfectly adequate you can still understand it mum's very happy with that in particular because she's blind so she needs that kind of functionality that speech feedback i tend to turn it off because i don't need it i can see the screen well enough and indeed you can change some of the visual settings as well to make it a bit clearer which i've done accessibility shortcuts 11 items voice guide on audio description on subtitle off and that. Subtitle mode, normal, disabled. No, Subtitle language, preferred, disabled. Smaller. Primary subtitle language, English. <laughs> Secondary subtitle language, English. <laughs> High contrast, on. <laughs> Set to off. Yes, she thought, laying down her brush in extreme. Set to on. I have had my in lodge on. Stay still because I can't get in. Right? Yeah. Set to off. Okay, ready? Yeah, yeah. Right, cool. Good luck. Set to on. Learn TV remote. Like getting your menu learning screen. Double cheeseburger. Just one ninety nine from the McDonald's Saver menu. Close button. TV. And it's got apps on there like Netflix and Amazon and all the catch-up services from the major TV channels, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Channel 5. It's got YouTube on there and Facebook and BBC News, BBC Sport and loads of other things. So yeah, it's really good to be able to watch stuff on there. I've been watching Outlander, for instance, on Amazon on there. So that's been really, really good to see it on a nice big screen. So yeah, that's been a really, really nice TV. And then the soundbar we got is a Sonos soundbar. You don't need a soundbar necessarily if you're not that bothered about audio quality. You know, the TV does actually have fairly decent sound of its own. But you know, I like music and movies and things like that. So I want, you know, a nice bit of power behind the sound. I do like that. So yeah, the Sonos soundbar is definitely an improvement and it's nice and easy to set up using a mobile phone app. You just feel a bit silly to start with because you have to kind of wander around the room holding your phone. So it just listens to the tones it's firing out throughout the 3D space so it can kind of calibrate itself to the entire room. Whether it made any difference or not, I don't know, but I did it as it wanted me to. So I'm happy to try and get the best sound out of it that I can. Yeah, that works really, really nicely. And then the Blu-ray player we got is a Sony Blu-ray player, which does exactly what you expect it to do, really. There's not a lot you can say about that. But the picture is very, very good. The Blu-rays load nice and quickly that I've tried so far. It's got apps on there as well, like Amazon and stuff like that. But I don't need to use them on that because I've got it on the TV already. But it's nice how it communicates with the TV as well, because if I want to stick a, a disc on, I can just open the tray and then close it and it will turn the TV on for me automatically and switch it to the correct channel without me having to do anything, which is brilliant. And it connects to the internet as well so you can update the firmware on it and the software. So yeah, that's quite handy. 
And yeah, it's just a nice trio of equipment. Um, it just does the job very nicely. It's just been nice to upgrade and you now get decent picture and sound and be able to watch stuff, you know, be able to watch like DVDs and Blu-rays on a proper TV again and, you know, be able to watch stuff online as well easily. I know I can do that stuff on my computer as well, but it's something much more preferable about watching it on a bigger TV screen where you can just relax in your armchair and, you know, you can go into the kitchen and get snacks if you want to. And it just feels nice to be able to sit in front of the TV rather than a computer. So I've been able to watch a lot of nice stuff um, recently, and I wanted to just tell you about a few of those little bits and pieces. So I'll start by mentioning Outlander for the programmes that I've been watching. Outlander Series 4 started on Amazon uh, a little while ago and thank you very much to Emily from Fashion Eister for alerting me to that fact because uh, I know she's a big fan of the show as well. And yeah, it's just a really fun show about a lady who's been thrown back in time and it's really had a lot of developments over the past few series. You, know, you need to watch it from the beginning really. And this series has actually had a blind character in there as well which has been quite interesting. But yeah, the whole series is just great, you know, the, the visuals are just stunning and the music is beautiful and the acting is great and the story is very interesting as well. There's always big twists in there every series and this season's been no exception. You know, you do really feel sorry for characters sometimes because they've gone through so much and things seem to be going so well and then suddenly they get really smacked down again and it's just very, very cruel sometimes the things they do to those characters. But that's drama for you. So yeah, it's really, really good. It's nice to have little surprises and the fact that nobody is quite safe from harm in that show. It's it's good. It keeps you on your toes and it's just a very enjoyable show. I like it a lot. And I know it's based on novels as well, so I should probably try and read them at some point. But yeah, Outlander is a very good show. If you've never checked it out before and you like something a bit different, then yeah, do go and check it out. It is a little bit gory, a little bit violent here and there, but you know, if you don't mind that, then it's perfectly fine. It doesn't do you any harm. So Outlander has been a very good show this past month, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the series concludes over the next few weeks. And then on Netflix, the most interesting thing for me over Christmas was Bandersnatch, which was a Black Mirror episode. Um, if you don't know Black Mirror, it's basically a very dystopian vision of the future, or the relatively near future even, potentially, if you like, looking at what would happen if you pushed kind of aspects of technology to its extremes. For instance, you know, everyone goes after likes on social media. You know, you want to get as many likes as possible for your posts. What if you took that into real life and tried to get likes for everything you did to try and increase your rating in the real world and all sorts of other things like this? And it has uncanny resemblances to real life and has had uncanny kind of predictions of things that happen in real life as well. It's really kind of scary in that kind of way. It kind of does make you feel a bit uncomfortable, but it's really, really cool. And... This year they've done one episode, Just so I think there is another season, a full season coming, but they've done one special episode this year because it's a choose your own adventure episode. Um, I used to love doing choose your own adventure books as a kid, you know, you read through the story and then you come to a junction where you have to decide what to do and go to the appropriate point. And they've now done this in video form. Um, Netflix have tried this out with a few kids shows I believe, but now this is the first time they've done it for adults and it works really, really well. It works really seamlessly you know it might not necessarily be the best story black mirror have ever done but it serves its purpose and does work really well and it's really really entertaining and yeah basically every so often you get choices about things to do and those choices dictate things that happen later in the story as well you know trying to map out everything it must be really really hard when they're setting it up or i know people online have tried to do flow charts of all the different choices you can make and it just shows how complex it is but yeah Different choices you make early on affect the choices you get later. So there are all sorts of different paths to find. If you do the whole story, then it lasts about an hour and a half if you can get to the end of it. But there's actually like five hours of footage to find all together. It was really, really fun to go through that. And I managed to find most of the different endings and most of the different paths by myself. I did then check someone's flowchart afterwards and there was only two or three things I missed, I think, that were of major interest. So... I did manage to find all the all the endings myself as well, which I was quite pleased about. So yeah, it was a really interesting concept and I think it worked really, really well. I am looking forward to a full normal season of Black Mirror as well. But yeah, I think this whole idea of you know, choosing your own adventure like that, they can probably do that for all sorts of things here and there. I know it'd be like very, very difficult to kind of script everything and film everything, but the feedback for this seems to have been very good. So I have a feeling Netflix will have a go at doing more things like that in the future which would be interesting to see so yeah if you haven't given bandersnatch a go yet and you like again something a bit dark and a bit different then it's well worth looking at it's well worth trying at least once just to see what it's like and we've had a special of doctor who as well this year it wasn't on christmas day like usual it was on new year's day this time which was a bit of a shame it would have been nice to have it on christmas day but doesn't matter at least we got a special so 
that was good. And it was really enjoyable. It had a Dalek in there. So that was Jodie Whittaker's first encounter with a Dalek in, in her role as the Doctor. And she did it really, really well. It was really, really good. And it was nice to see the Dalek kind of building itself and kind of materials it found on Earth. So it kind of got itself this slightly unique appearance. And yeah, there's just plenty of action and special effects and good humour as always. A nice bit of drama. It's always a nice mixture of things, Doctor Who. I know this series has had a bit of a knocking from some quarters. It's not been very popular among some of the fans. But then every series seems to get kind of bad feedback from people so it's hard to judge whether this is any better or worse than any of them personally i've been really enjoying it so you know, i'm very happy about that you know i think they've dealt with some important issues very very nicely it's helped to highlight things and jody's been a great female doctor you know everyone doubted whether she could do it some people still do probably but again i think she's just been brilliant so i'm gonna get the blu-ray when that comes out very very shortly so i can watch it all again which I'll have to because we're not going to get a new series of Doctor Who until early 2020 now. So we're going to have to kind of wait a bit longer for that, which is a shame. But, you know, I'm sure they'll look back at the first series and probably improve on it as well. Because obviously it's Chris Chibnall's first series as showrunner as well as Jodie's first series as the Doctor. So I'm sure there'll be some interesting changes next season as they figure out what worked best and what didn't. So, yeah. It was nice to see Doctor Who over Christmas, as per usual. And then the other sci-fi drama I've been enjoying is The Flash, of course. I always enjoy watching that. And just before they took their Christmas break, they did one of their traditional crossover episodes, um, this time with The Arrow and Supergirl, one episode each and a three-parter. I'm not usually that bothered about the crossovers, to be honest, because I don't watch the other series, so I'm not as familiar with the characters and... They obviously take it away from the story of The Flash because the story arc there isn't going to be relevant to the crossovers as much. So I prefer the regular Flash episodes, but the crossover was fun. It was all right. But I'm looking forward to the regular season of The Flash kind of resuming at some point soon. So that'd be good. And then moving on to comedy and the most significant one in December was Not Going Out um, with Lee Mack because they did a live episode for the first time ever. And it was very, very good. You know, Not Going Out is a great sitcom. I love watching that anyway. You know, even though it's changed over the years, it still works. It's still got Lee Mack. He still writes it. He's still very good in it, as is everyone else. So, yeah, the live episode was very good. It was very tongue-in-cheek. I had a lot of fun with it. So it, it really came across well that they were enjoying themselves. And, yeah, it just worked very, very nicely. And if they want to do any more in the future, I'll certainly be happy for them to do so. And then there was a special one-off comedy called Click and Collect with Stephen Merchant and Hasim Chowdhury. And basically Stephen's character was trying to get this special toy for his daughter that she really, really wanted for Christmas because it's the most popular toy of the year. Everybody wants one and everybody's got one apart from them. You know, his one attempt to try and get one initially kind of fails because he argues with the shopkeeper and then he finds he can't get one anywhere else. So his neighbour, played by Asim, then finds the one remaining toy for sale online. But they have to go on a road trip to go and get it because there's no way it can be delivered in time. So you have to go on this road trip together, the two of them, and it's just really, really fun about all the scrapes they get into, and like the interplay between them is very good as well. And yeah, it was just a really enjoyable comedy. It was nice to have something a bit different like that for Christmas. I've also been enjoying The Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon as well, of course. The Big Bang Theory is in its last season at the moment, and now they've taken their Christmas break as well. But that's been really, really good as per usual. And Young Sheldon, I wasn't sure if I'd go into season two, but I have, and it's still been really good as well. So I'm looking forward to both of them coming back soon. And I've also watched my Blu-ray, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that I bought late last year. And that's been really, really good too. I've seen the show before because I had the DVD, but it's been great to re-watch it again after a good few years. So yeah, it's nice to watch that. It's very silly. It's very funny. And there's plenty of extras on there as well. You've got all the extras from the original DVD release with a documentary and some interviews and bits and pieces. And on the new extras disc, you've got various new bits of footage as well. So you've got all the animations in HD now, so they look really crisp and clear. There's also some HD film footage as well from when they were shooting, which is quite interesting to look at. And there's a lot of behind-the-scenes studio footage as well, a whole compilation of it, which is really interesting. It gives you a great insight into the making of the show. And some of that's quite amusing as well. And there's some little interviews with Douglas Adams too. And there's a song sung by Marvin the Robot and Blue Peter. So there's lots of little random bits and pieces in there. It's quite fun to dig through it all. And then I've also been watching Family Guy Season 18 on DVD that I bought last year. That's been really good to start going through the episodes on that. And I've also been watching lots of classic Christmas specials as well, either on DVD or on the TV. I like watching classic sitcoms. Their specials are always good. Um, so Still Open All Hours had a brand new Christmas special this year on the BBC. 
And I've also been watching things like Only Fools and Horses and Father Ted and Blackadder and Bottom and 2.4 Children and Men Behaving Badly and some others to have them. All those sorts of Christmas specials are always good fun to watch. So yeah, there's a full list in my blog again in case I've missed anything off there, which I know I have. I always like watching those classic shows every single year. Even if you see the same Christmas episode a lot of times, they're still funny every year. So they've been very, very good. Kept me amused over Christmas. And then I've also been watching topical comedy like The Last Leg and Mock the Week, which have had Christmas specials this year. And The Last Leg actually had a New Year's Eve special as well, which was really, really good. And there's also A Year in the Life of a Year, which is very funny on the BBC. That's been going for a few years now. And that's basically a spoof review of the year. So they have like mashups of footage of people saying things. So it's very, very funny, very rude as well. But it's very, very well edited. For instance, there was a scene involving Paddington Bear, which was um, quite traumatic for poor Paddington, I think, the way they edited that. Um, but it was very, very funny as well. And there was a song about Jeffrey from Rainbow in it and all sorts of random things like that. So, yeah, that was very good. It's kind of filled the hole left by Charlie Brooker's yearly wipe that he used to do. It's a shame that's kind of not come back, but I appreciate he's been working on Black Mirror and other stuff. But um, Charlie Brooker's yearly wipe was uh, very, very good. So this kind of fills the gap left by that to some degree. So, yeah, I'm glad I watched that. And there's also been game shows like QIXL and Would I Lie to You and 8 Out of 10 Cats Does Countdown and The Big Fat Quiz of Everything and The Big Fat Quiz of the Year. They've all been good fun to watch over Christmas as well. And for QI, there's obviously the related podcast as well, No Such Thing as a Fish, done by the QI researchers. That's always very interesting to listen to every week. And they had a special episode featuring Stephen Fry recently, an extended edition, which was very, very good. And their audio the book of the year, which I've mentioned before, is very good too, so... Yeah, I recommend checking out the No Such Thing as a Fish podcast if you never have, because there's a lot of interesting stuff on there. And then I've also been enjoying some stand-up comedy as well. So I've enjoyed two live stand-up DVDs by John Bishop and John Richardson, which are very, very good. John Richardson was my favourite of the two, I think. And then there was also Michael McIntyre's big Christmas show with all his usual surprises and games and music and all that kind of stuff. He's always very, very good value on a Saturday night with his big show. So his Christmas show was no exception. And then something slightly different was a programme featuring Ramesh Ranganathan. This was the Christmas misadventures of Ramesh Ranganathan. I haven't actually seen his regular misadventures series this is the first time i've seen any of the episodes i was just in a hotel in torquay and it came on so i thought well why not it was very good it was about a trip to the arctic he went on and what he experienced there there was a lot of humor in there but there was also one or two sort of serious and emotional moments as well as you saw you know the way they kind of killed animals and things like that so it did have kind of little emotional moments little serious kind of reminders of how they live their life out there compared to ours it was actually quite a good hour of television so i enjoyed that and then another comedian I've been enjoying over Christmas and into the new year even now is Kenny Everett because a network released um, the entire four series of the Kenny Everett video show that he did for Thames TV in the late 70s, early 80s with all sorts of musical guests and lots of other random comedy. And if you know Kenny Everett, you'll know that random is an understatement. It's very surreal. It's very silly. It's just completely mad. But he was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. And, yeah, I'm loving watching those episodes because I never saw the show at the time. You know, I wasn't even born then, so I've only seen clips and things like that. So to see his show properly, it's really good. You know, his, his humour is manic. It is crazy, but it is really, really funny. And he has lots of great musical guests on there as well. You know, you've had Susie Quattro and The Who and The Moody Blues and all sorts of other really kind of big names as well as lesser known ones as well. They have had to cut out a few performances for rights reasons. They haven't been able to clear every single thing, but the vast majority of the shows are intact. So there's just a few little cuts here and there, I think, which is a shame, but at least we've got the vast majority of it. I think Network have put in a lot of effort as far as I can tell. So it's a proper variety show. It's just really really mad but that was Kenny Everett he was a genius though he was really really good so he won't be to everyone's taste but I've certainly been enjoying watching him and then the other slightly random thing I saw comedy wise was the secret story of the BBC Christmas tapes back in the day the BBC engineers used to keep out tapes and things from the cutting room floor and kind of make special like, little comedy things as well just to show to the BBC staff at Christmas you know they were never intended for public consumption so they were a little bit rude and a little bit silly and all this kind of stuff but they obviously were leaked and the upper levels of the kind of BBC management didn't look too kindly on these things after a little while, but they went, for, went along for quite a few years, these tapes. So it's really, really fun to see kind of the footage from them. I think they're pretty much all on YouTube, I think, if you look around for them. But they showed a lot of the clips on this TV show as well, on BBC4, and it's just really funny. And it's a fascinating kind of insight into, you know, what they get up to when they're not filming their programmes, you know. They're very good sports, a lot of the people who featured in them. But yeah, that was kind of something random, something different, but definitely something very, very fun to look at. There were some big stars in there in the way that you might never have seen them before so it's very good 
And then in terms of music, I got the Rolling Stones Voodoo Lounge Uncut on Blu-ray, which is basically a live concert. In the past, it's been released in a kind of truncated form, but this time it's complete. So there's every single song they did in there. And it's you know over two hours. It's a really long show, and it's really, really good. I mean, if you know the Rolling Stones, you'll know they're awesome live. And there's a few bonus tracks on there as well from um, other dates on the tour, I think, with songs that weren't in this particular main concert. So, yeah, you get everything, basically. They performed on that tour in one way or another. So, yeah, that was a really good Blu-ray to have. And then the other musical thing I enjoyed was the Madness New Year's Eve concert as well. You know, every year for the past few years, the BBC have been putting on a big act to kind of see you through midnight. So they perform a few songs like to lead you up to midnight, and then they have a break for obviously the bongs of Big Ben and the fireworks, and then they perform the rest of their set for the second half. So Madness were doing it this year because it is their 40th anniversary this year. Um, so they're going to be making a big deal of that, of course. And yeah, it was really good. Obviously, your madness are always great. And then the final musical thing I've been enjoying, and Mum as well, is Junior Choice on BBC Radio 2. They do a Christmas special of that every year, um, which is like two hours long. So we split it up like, over three or four days and listen to a bit of it at a time as we have our dinner each day over Christmas. And yeah, it's really good, really nostalgic, really good fun. You know, you get songs like Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West, and... Um, you get an extract from Sparky's Magic Piano and you get My Brother by Terry Scott, which is always amusing. And yeah, just lots of nostalgic things like that. Things that mum remembers, things that I remember. There's a few modern songs as well for the kids as well that they like. So there's something for everyone in there. It's really, really good fun. Annika Rice is the current host. It used to be hosted by Ed Stewart for many years, but now Annika Rice has been doing it this year. It's really good to hear that back again this year. It's nice that the BBC have kept that tradition going because I know it's very, very popular. And that's it. That's everything I've got up to over Christmas in 2018. I've got to hang out with lots of my friends and have fun going out and about to all sorts of different things and overindulged on food and enjoyed lots of entertainment and stuff like that. So I'm really pleased with how Christmas went. It was a great way to end a great year. You know, I had the ab sale, um, which I raised £920 for in the end, which was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much to everyone who helped me raise money for that. And you can still donate until March if you so wish. I also did uh, a speech for primary school children at an assembly earlier in the year, which was very, very rewarding. That was a huge achievement for me. I also helped out with the Anaridia Network Conference and Anaridia Day. And I'm going to be speaking at the Anaridia Network Conference in 2019, in June. And yeah, it was just a really busy year. I was much more confident in 2018 than I was in 2017. You know, 2017 was a year where I was really, really experimenting to see you know, what groups are out there, what I might enjoy, what I might not enjoy. And I kind of feel like I really found my feet a lot more in 2018, really, really settled into London properly. And 2019 looks set to be very exciting as well for reasons that I'll go into in a future video. So it's been a really, really good year and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the year ahead holds. So thank you very much for watching this recap of um, my Christmas. I hope you enjoyed hearing about everything I got up to. Everything is in my blog, as I've said before. There's a lot more detail in there than I can possibly go into here. But I hope you had a wonderful Christmas as well, whatever you got up to. And I hope that 2019 is a very happy and prosperous year for you. I'll certainly keep sharing my year with you as I go along. Doing these monthly favourites videos it seems to work quite well for summarising things. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Happy New Year, and I will see you for another video very, very soon. Bye.